Yeah, so another way of thinking about that billion view figure um, is that before we started, probably most of those images have never been seen by anybody alive. Right? Um, and now um, they've been seen on average, you know, a thousand times. times. What's that? Uh, every image has been seen at least 40 times. A minute. But, but the average is yeah. a thousand. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, so, so um, uh, just a, a couple of comments on sort of where we, um, where we are now and where we're going, okay? So over the course of the last couple of years, we've gotten a pretty good sense of what the demand looks like in the UK for the sorts of um, uh, research engagement with the digital collections um, in the way that our labs have supported, okay? Um, and that looks like it's around 1,000 a year um, in the short term. Okay, so think about it, uh, it's five a day. Um, that's enough to provide some meaningful support uh, at the institutional level. Um, and, uh, you know, what the shape of increase is as we were, to, if we were to ramp up to meet that level um, is an interesting and, and open question. Uh, what does that mean? Is that, you know, uh, a thousand times, you know, five weeks or is a thousand times five minutes? Um, uh, there's a wide range of support needs. Um, sometimes it's a quick discussion. Sometimes people, if we had the right type of online resource, would be able to just get to it themselves. Um, sometimes it's really, you know, quite sophisticated. So take that example of I want to find poetry in 19th century newspapers uh, digitized. That's a very sophisticated problem. Um, it requires. Um, quite a rich set of access capabilities and, and analysis capabilities. Um, another thing that's becoming uh, uh, increasingly clear as we look to meet the demand is the need for curatorial knowledge um, about the digital collections and about the relationship to the physical collections. Um, it's that knowledge that will help researchers to not make really stupid conclusions. Okay. Um, it's so hardwired in people's like, oh, you know, it's fourth in the British Library, right? They got all the stuff. I'm working with the digital version of the stuff. My analysis is it is probably using comprehensive and at, at, at best and representative at worst. Um, and the reality is um, that that's not the case. Um, there, you know, there's a, will be an interesting historical piece to do in a few years about, you know how people made silly mistakes by misunderstanding the nature of digital collections in the early part of the 21st century. Um, uh, um, we also had, um, we, we have uh, seen that, that demand for access, and that's both on and off site, um, and it's both physical and virtual. Um, so uh, the, the virtual could be because um, there are materials that we can't provide access to off site. Um, but it can also be from people who are looking at the physical and the digital elements of a collection together. Um, so uh, we have to provide that sort of um, uh, combined uh, uh, services as well. Um, there's also a lot of demand for um, training, um, tutorials that people can work through and get an understanding of, of um, how it's going to work uh, for real. Um, and then for continued outreach and case studies, as Manders mentioned, uh, people love to see worked examples um, and be able to adapt them to their own circumstances. Um, and I guess when I think about the, the biggest change, um, I sometimes talk about it as a shift from a boutique operation. Um, I don't like industrial scale quite, but, but that's kind of where, where we're going. Um, and that brings, at least in our institution, a whole bunch of additional um, uh, requirements with it. So um, the first point of contact with folks here in the reading room, for instance, uh, is the reading room staff. And so they need to know about their digital collections that are available in the reading rooms, just as they do their physical collections. Many of them, they all know a lot about how people interact with and who support those interactions with the physical. They need to adapt that and learn those lessons for the digital as well. 
um, uh, dedicated spaces, physical and digital, um, are also part of that. So just as you can book a space in the library to go and listen, listen to audio recordings, you should be able to book a space and go in and work with digital collections on site. Uh, integrated support processes. Um, if you ask a question at the British Library, there's a mechanism for that. There's a set of support systems for that. There's a set of frequently asked questions. And it doesn't do much uh, yet or has in the past coverage of the digital challenges. We need to integrate them uh, into those existing processes. And uh, we've identified a kind of tiered support model that looks like um, uh, it will work relatively well for us. Um, and that's something we'll, we'll, as we talk about things over the rest of the today and, and tomorrow, we'll you know, maybe open up a little bit as well. Um, but uh, um, it, it, what will help us to manage the demand um, based on the resources that we have. Uh, and I think as we look to increasing the supply at a uh, demand in the order of uh, many hundreds of uh, requests per year, we also have to note that we're going to be committing more resources, uh, and that brings that responsibility of measuring and demonstrating the value. Uh, and that's, that's a thing that many of us will see at our institutions uh, as well. And, and lastly, um, uh, there are opportunities to integrate the labs with some of the larger scale of collaborations that have in some sense been enabled by that baseline of work. Um, and the Living with Machines project um, that I mentioned is a nice example of that. Very large digital humanities project um, where people will be working at scale with um, uh, digital collections, uh, data, and using quite sophisticated algorithmic techniques. So I think that's where we are roughly now. Um, uh, it's a journey. Uh, there are many miles to go. I don't know if we get to an end or whether we get some of us get tired and sort of, you know, stop, stop, on it, stop off at a nice village along the way. Um, but, uh, but, but let's take a couple of questions um, for any of the, the things that, that might have come up so far. Uh, just a quick comment on data.pl. I noticed that there's very large files. Oh, thanks. On data.pl, I noticed that there's very large files and no samples that I saw. Is this something that's been discussed? Because and, and no, uh, like a sample. So for instance, the researcher who might be interested is faced with the choice of downloading a, a 20 gigabyte file or do nothing. And yeah, no, th th this is uh, definitely has been discussed, mm -hmm. definitely in the plan. Um, and I think the uh, uh, it's one of the sort of pragmatic decisions. Um, uh, we're moving that stuff to a new uh, system um, that will be part of uh, British Library. Sort of, it's, it's actually a really nice example of something moving out of that pilot environment, the labs environment, into the overall library environment, which are the, the, the full support process of SEO and so on. Um, and that will definitely need to include samples. Um, I've been pleased at uh, how well, depends on your bandwidth, right? Um, but how manageable it is. Um, so there's no API, uh, but actually HTTP is the API. Uh, and it works surprisingly well, at least for um, you know things up to 50 gigabyte. Um, doesn't seem problematic. Could, could I just add something to that? I think when we made the decision to actually put the stuff out there, uh, we had a little bit of a mantra, which was uh, we had to use time as the variable to just get stuff out. So we did a little bit of cleaning, but we embraced dirty data. Just get it out there, and others will do, will do the cleaning up for us. Sort of happened a bit, but if I had my time again, and I had the resources, I would definitely do lots of data curation. Producing smaller sets, more meaningful, to provide that access. I think, I think that's a good point, because for some people, they do, well, what do I do with this? And I think that was probably partly a resource issue and time and uh, you know, just getting it out there. And it kind of worked, but you know, you know, there's lessons to be learned as well. <laughs>